All right, everybody. We're going to wait a minute for everybody to get in and log in. And so as we're doing that, um, you know, I, I think you guys, for those of you who have been uh, on the webinars in the past, you have seen Jessica. Jessica is our marketing editor, but more importantly for this episode, uh, she is actually the producer of the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast. And we're going to dive into some of the things that she does for Kirk and I in order to execute a seamless uh, podcast uh, that a lot of you uh, really do pay attention and listen to. All right. So, uh, Jessica, do you uh, you were going to ask everybody a question to go ahead and slap in the chat. That is correct. Okay. Hi, everybody. So good to see you. Thank you for being here. Before we get rolling, I'm just so curious to know, where are you in your podcasting journey? Are you, you know, still thinking about getting started? Are you, you know, actually getting ready to record episode one? Are you already podcasting? Put that in the chat, please. We would just love to know and, and read that as we go along. I just uh, I just formally asked the question in in the in the in the chat. So uh, okay. and as always, if you have questions along the way, Jessica and I will both be um, uh, looking at the uh, at the chat. Mark Milligan said within a few weeks of launching first podcast. Yay! Awesome. Congratulations, Mark. Um, Stacy said uh, just starting down the path. All right. So, Stacy, you're in for a treat. This nice. is going to be a good one. Uh, because we are really going to dive into everything that you really need to do to successfully start your show. All right. You ready to dive in there, sister? Yes, I'm ready. All right, let's go. All right. So the number one most important thing that you can possibly do is make sure you know who you're talking to and what your ultimate goal is from your podcast. If you think that you're going to start a show right? And within six weeks, you're going to get leads immediately. It's not going to happen. And it's a terrible way to start your show because you're going to have unrealistic expectations. And then what's going to end up happening is, is you're, you're really going to, you're going to fall down, right? You're really going to fall down and you're going to get grumpy and you're going to have pod fade. In fact, Jessica, we just released our pod fade episode. Kirk and I did. Uh, so if you haven't seen that on our top advisor marketing podcast, please go ahead and take a look at that. But the big thing here is, is is this podcasting, any long form content is very, very simple philosophically. This is a long-term, what we call slow marketing play. And as you build up the momentum with this slow marketing, then what will happen at some point is you will achieve escape velocity. And when that happens, and if you follow good podcasting tips and techniques, it will absolutely bring in new business for you. But it really primarily should be a client education, client retention, and center of influence relationship building tool. All of those are how you want to enter into the show. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that too. But the other thing that's wildly important is you have to know who you're talking to, because as I say all the time, you are never going to outspend Ken Fisher. And so, and what does that mean? Well, that means that if you're trying to market to everybody, you're in a really crowded space with lots of people who are trying to market to every single solitary person. Raymond James, Ameriprise, Edward Jones, Ken Fisher, uh, you know, all of those people who are screaming all over the airwaves, you're just going to add to that noise. We want you to rise above the noise here and more importantly, be your own loud, which means that you need to be yourself on your show. But more importantly, you have to have a very focused and targeted audience. And in fact, Kirk and I uh, and Jessica, actually, we talked about this on one of the last webinars. We've created an enormous amount of content surrounding niche marketing. Um, it is something you have to do, everybody. It is not uh, up for discussion anymore. It is how you're going to be able to grow a 21st century financial services practice. Now, the other thing you have to do when you're just starting down the path like Stacy is, is you have to know what you're going to talk about. And I'm going to dive into that in one second. But before I do that, I want to talk about compliance. I was just on a show uh, yesterday. Uh, it's called the Angie's Wisdom Podcast. And um, she's a coach, works in financial services and uh, with experts and entrepreneurs. And one of the things that she asked me was, hey, <laughs> how do you create content and still be compliant? And I said, well, there's one simple rule and one simple tip. The one simple rule is don't say stupid stuff. That's really, really important. You all know what you're allowed to say. You just choose not to do it. You choose 
to start talking a whole bunch of stuff that's going to get you and everybody else in trouble. So cut it out. But the second thing is one of the greatest tips that I actually uh, used when we got approved at Raymond James was when somebody comes back to you and says, this is not going to be compliant, you can't use this, your immediate response is, what can I do to make this compliant? That is news to your compliance officer's ears, and then they will tell you what you need to do to make it compliant. But let's get back to your episode, episode, episode. Now, here's the thing. We want you to have your first episode be the origin story. Jessica, what is the most listened to episode any of our clients have ever had before? Episode one, hands down. <laughs> episode one, hands down. <laughs> and episode one in our system here in our managed influence acceleration process, which is what we uh, do for advisors and clients like all of you, um, is it is your origin story. And this isn't just why did you become a financial advisor? This is your life, right? Are you, uh, is this a second career? Is this a third career? Is this what you wanted to do since you were knee high to a grasshopper and your grandmother sat you on her knee and she told you about money? Those are really important things that start rounding out you as a person and your personality. And it's vitally important for you to get that information out there. You do want to end on the fact that you are now a financial services professional and maybe what you do today, but don't spend too much time on that. What you really want to do is you want to talk about what life is like now. You're a business owner. You work for a specific company. You've got, you know, 72 dogs and five cats. Uh, you know, you love to travel. You have a tiny home. Whatever it is, make sure that you share that stuff because that's where people will feel the most connection. So now I'm going to turn this over to Jessica because she is our episode outline master here. She provides Kirk and I with a wonderful outline so that we can follow it. And she's going to tell you why it's so important. Yeah. I mean, now that you have your first topic locked in, it really is time to start outlining. And this is the basic structure here. And the key word is outline, not, not scripting. There might be certain parts of your podcast that you want to script because you want to make sure you're saying it in a very specific way. Like if you're, um, talking about your guest's bio, you know, their biography at the top of the episode. I think it's pretty, it's reasonable to, you know, to kind of read that. But for the most part, you're going to have bullet points and key points that you're drawing, you're drawing from as you go. Um, I was thinking earlier about when I was in grade five, Matt, and our whole class was assigned to write a speech. I don't mm. know if everyone had to do that when they were in school. Like every year we had to write a speech. And I wrote one about my experience being a twin because I'm a twin huh? and it was going to be such a fun topic. Um, my teacher was excited, but when it came time to do the speech, I just read off my cue cards. I, I was nervous and I just wasn't as prepared with the material as I should have been. I just read, I didn't even look at the class and, you know, talk about making a fun topic boring. Like, <laughs> you know, like that should have been cute. That, that should have yeah. been good and the same thing could happen with episode one should be a really engaging episode but if you read it just it just flattens it and it really scripts out what people expect from a podcast which is a you know a conversation something a little bit informal and intimate all right let's have a look at the next slide matt i have an example here of an intro and this is from one of our wonderful clients, Mark Hansen. He recently launched his podcast and his first episode did really well, was really well received. And he talked about who he is as an advisor. So I thought we could just have a look at this. This is a screenshot from his transcript. And the first thing you might notice is there are two names, Mark Hansen and his co-host, Bill Tucker. <laughs> we recommend having someone interview you on your podcast um, for a few reasons. I think a big one is that for a lot of us, it feels awkward to talk about ourselves, but when someone else is asking, we have permission. It just, it just feels a little more, it just feels better. I think a little more, a little more comfortable. And then also your co-host is going to act as the advocate for your audience. They might ask questions you, you've never been asked before that you didn't even think of that people are really interested in. Um, they might also ask you to clarify points that maybe just 
came out a little bit confusing, which which happens. So highly, highly recommend having someone interview you for the episode. And then another thing here is just having a look at what's happening in the intro is it's not this big complicated thing, you know, especially for episode one, um, Bill Tucker is, you know, acknowledging that this is the first episode, how exciting, Mark is excited to be podcasting, and then lower down, they dive into the purpose, um, we're going to introduce you to your audience, and then who are you, and then they jump right into it. Okay, next slide. The key points. Now, this is really the heart of your episode. With your key points, you're going to have um, stories, data, examples. For episode one, it's probably going to be mostly stories. And when I was doing this, I was just kind of pretending like I was, you know, writing the outline for Mark's episode. And so I took the key point here is it's really um, how I became an advisor. But what I like to do when I write outlines is I flip it into a question, and then that makes it easy for whoever's interviewing you to just phrase it as a question and they could add a little color to it as well. Um, and then nested un under that, I have two stories that Mark told. So if I was writing this outline for Mark, I would take one of two, you know, one of two approaches. Here I set up the stories as prompts. This works well if Mark has told these stories, you know, like millions of times, like you know, he tells you that at parties, client meetings, and he has his delivery down. But if if not, I would recommend um, elaborating on the prompts here and actually doing bullet points of the story so that you really tell it the way that you want to, because it's so easy to get nervous and leave things out and then go, oh, oh, I forgot to mention this. And, you know, I, th I think some of that is okay because it should be a little bit informal, but too much. And it just, <laughs> just get, gets a little bit hard to follow. Now, one more thing here, I really wanna address any marketing assistance in the group. If you are working with an advisor on their podcast episode, any episode, um, make it a collaborative experience. What I like to do with Matt and Kirk is I like to, put something in front of them, you know, for the outline. I wouldn't, I wouldn't show up to a meeting with the basic structure that I showed you earlier. I would show up with something like this, um, where I've already started laying out some key points. And usually even before that, I've gotten some buy-in on the topic. So when I was preparing for the pod fade episode, I asked Matt and Kirk, you know, what are the biggest causes of pod fade that you see? And then I chose the biggest ones and, you know, co combine any that seem similar. So we were all in agreement, you know, by the time we reach the stage where we're looking out the outline, we're like, yep, this, this is what we're talking about. And then it's, you know, a matter of how are we talking about it? Um, so with Matt, I might say, oh, Matt, you know, you know that story you tell? Oh my gosh, that would be perfect in this episode. So I like to come with ideas even the intro I'll start to write it a little bit to show them the approach and say you know what do you think of this and you know sometimes they change things and and try not to take it personally or take it to heart if the advisor makes changes that's actually a positive thing because you want them to take ownership of their of their content and be excited and say oh no you know what I just ha I just had this conversation with a client and I need to talk about that in the episode episode. Sorry, I just need to take a drink. Matt, can you go to the next slide? Absolutely. Okay. And okay, as you're going through your episode, you could use the perfect content formula to create something just really, really compelling. Storytelling, it's going to be so easy in episode one. It really lends to that. Um, you're going to tell stories to help you know, hold your audience's attention, help them relate to you. And they don't need to be, it doesn't need to be like an epic story. It's just, what is your authentic, you know, genuine story? And then next is entertainment. For that, I'm not talking about like trying to be a comedian or or being, you know, charismatic. Um, if you're funny, then great, <laughs> you know, use that. But it's really just about taking, um, taking your show seriously as a performance. And Matt will talk a little bit more about preparing for it, but just keeping in your mind that, people are choosing to tune into you and they could choose to tune out. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but you know, it yeah. has to be something that they, that they really want to listen to. 
And then the third thing is education. In episode one, your entire purpose is educating people on who you are and what what is your journey to becoming a financial advisor. As you record more episodes, you're going to get into educating about your process and specific financial topics. But for this, it's who are you? And, And practicing that just gets you used to fulfilling this perfect content formula. And then last, we have the call to action. You know, what is the next step in, in building this relationship? It's not call me. It's not call me right now. It's, you know, it's probably subscribe to my podcast. Um, and we'll talk more about that in a second. So you can keep building that relationship with them. Okay. What's next here is the conclusion. After you've gone through your key points, you're going to wrap up the episode. You're going to thank your listeners. And, and this is so important. When you have a co-host, you're probably talking to the co-host, you know, and not so much the audience because it's a little more natural. So this might actually be your first time directing or addressing your listeners directly. And you could just say something like, you know, you, you could have chosen to listen to anything and you chose to tune into this conversation. Um, we really appreciate that. Thank you so much for choosing to hang out with us today. And then next, you can talk about you know, what's coming up in the next episode. Why should they tune in? Why should they subscribe? And then that ties in you know, with the call to action. It's very easy, very easy ask. Subscribe to my podcast for more. Okay. And oh my gosh, this is a great example. Um, we have Jane and Manasseh's podcast here. Jane is actually a member of our Pod Rocket Influence Academy, and she used our resources to help. Um, create their podcast. And the reason I'm, you know, pulling up an example here is because they did their first, well, let me back up. Their podcast is for foreign born individuals immigrating to the US. And so for their first episode, they talked about their own experience with immigrating. So that is something else you can do um, is if you've walked a similar walk as your audience, talk about it. Say, you know, I may not have gone through the exact same thing, but I, I get it. You know, I, I get the challenges and that builds a lot of credibility and trust. So some inspiration there and just a wonderful podcast. And because you, you know, you showed up and you registered today for the webinar, we're giving you access to a free resource in our Pod Rocket Influence Academy. This is our podcast episode worksheet. And I'll just take you through this quickly. I really recommend using this for probably episodes two and onwards, where yeah. you're really getting into those financial topics. And something I really like about the first page on the left is it helps you build out your introduction. You know, what are the key challenges your ideal clients are facing? Um, what, what do they need to solve? What you can do at the top of your episode where, you know, by the way, people are listening and they're making a decision of whether they want to listen or not, you know, some people just love you and they listen, <laughs> you know, they're, they're invested no matter what. Um, and some people, they, they need, you know, they have to have the topic qualified a little mm-hmm. bit. So at the top of the episode, you can give people a snapshot of the journey that you're about to take them on. People are listening to a, fin- a financial podcast to be educated um, primarily and, and not to learn just, you know, for the sake of it. Um, but it's they have they have a problem that they want to solve. So you're going to be taking them from point A to point B, where point B is this desired state that they want. Um, so maybe the episode is about estate planning, and you know your audience, you know you can say, you know right now maybe you feel confused and intimidated by estate planning, um, especially by all all the jargon. Well, by the end of this episode, you're going to have information that's going to help you feel confident about starting that process. So you could elaborate on that, but I think you get it. Just showing people where they're going to end up at the end of the episode and people can qualify whether they're in that situation and probably figure, wow, that's a good use of my time. <laughs> like that's, that's a good 30 minutes if you could take me there. And then that second page then is expanding on those key points. So we'll put a link in the chat for you and you can access the resource. Let me know if you want me to do that, Matt. 
Uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Why, why don't you do that now? And it's yeah. funny, Jessica, you just used the, the estate planning uh, example and, and just rattled that off like it was it was nothing. Uh, this is just such a that's such a good example of, you know, this is literally what we do all day, every day for financial advisors. We've probably done a thousand estate planning attorney podcasts and, you know, in the time, maybe that, not that many, maybe 500, right? Uh, so we've done hundreds and hundreds of estate planning attorney podcasts. And so, you know, as a company who literally does this all day long, uh, that just, you know, Jessica doesn't even think about how powerful what she just said was and how much experience that just showed her. Uh, but yes, so there is the link to the worksheet is in the chat. Please make sure that you do that because listen, uh, free resources are absolutely fantastic. And we would love for you to click on that because it's wildly, wildly helpful. Uh, you know, we've done about 7,000 episodes for financial advisors. Now it's actually north of that. Um, and this is one of the worksheets that we provide our clients on a regular basis to make sure that they know how to format their show. All right, now we're going to switch gears. And I'm going to go through some of this pretty quickly, uh, mostly because I don't need to dive into it super deep. But listen, you have to set up your recording space. And the reason why is you have to be in a quiet place. But if you buy the right microphone, which I'm going to show you in just a second, if you buy the right microphone, you don't have to worry about it. Now, I'm going to do a live crazy example of the power of a, of a good microphone. So I'm in my basement. I work from home. I do not have soundproofing. This is actually a, a wood panel which is not what you're supposed to have. I do have a little bit of carpet on the ground, but if you just move the microphone away, you can hardly hear me at all because this is a directional condenser microphone, right? So you want to buy a microphone like this. Please do not buy the Yeti mic. I know every single solitary list says that that's the best microphone. It is not when it comes to post-production and they want you to buy that microphone because you have to buy all sorts of other crap to be able to support a crappy microphone. So we'll show you what microphone to do uh, in a minute. Now, there are two different kinds of pop filters. Uh, there's this, which is actually considered a windscreen. And if you don't have hard P's and S's, this is just fine. I have worked for really the last 10 years on making my P's and S's not so difficult, not so harsh. So I don't have a pop filter, but many of you have seen them. They're a, a circular thing that goes in front of the microphone that actually just makes the wind get dissipated in front of the microphone so you don't have hard P's and S's. The only way you're going to find out if you have hard P's and S's is you have to do a podcast recording without the pop filter and see what happens because it will actually pop on the, uh, on the audio track specifically. We definitely recommend that you have headphones. Now, I use these, which are in-ear monitors, much like Rob. Rockstars use uh, because I don't like having the big things on my ears. Uh, some of you really like having the big things on your ears, ears and look like Princess Leia. That's totally fine. You are a podcasting person or you're about to become one. Wearing headphones is entirely fine. Now, we have now added what we call our enhanced video solution service. Uh, and so we have cameras. So we recommend that you have a camera. We recommend that you have a light. Now, Jessica and I are in a bad situation because we both wear glasses. I can't see crap without my glasses. And so I can't use a ring light. But I'm telling you, if you don't have glasses, buy a ring light. Buy the 18-inch ring light. It's perfect. It's fine. They're adjustable. They're like 70 bucks max. Um, I actually have a humongous lighting set up here. I have two huge light boxes on the side. I've got a light that points up to bounce so that I don't get a lot of uh, glare in my glasses. I do shoot a lot of video. But please, please, please make sure, and I have to say this out loud, YouTube is the second largest podcasting player in the world. Spotify is number one. So you have to have a video component to your podcast now. It's just the reality of the situation. Now, here is the microphone. Please, please just buy this freaking microphone. Don't buy anything stupid. And uh, thank you, Jessica, for putting the link to the worksheet and the microphone in there. This is an amazing microphone. We have probably done 6,000 episodes with these, this microphone. Just to put that into perspective, this is a workhorse microphone. The internal structure is fantastic. It is a directional condenser microphone, and it's going to cost you for the whole package about a hundred bucks. Buy this, use this. It's a USB plug and play. It's super easy. But if you have two microphones, and if you're going to try to record with a friend in your space, you do need to have a mixer. All right. And so this mixer is the AGO6. 
Um, they sell out. I just want you all to know that. So I think this is, yeah, this is linked to B and H. They usually have a lot of, of these in stock because there was one called the AGO three that we used to use a lot. Uh, but the AGO six is the newer version. Software is great. It is plug and play with any computer, Mac, whatever, a PC, it's totally, totally fine. Um, but this will allow you to have two people in the same room without major echoing issues and without major audio issues. So the AGO6 is absolutely fantastic. Now, I'm just going to keep rolling because I want to, we have lots of stuff to cover here. I talk a lot about show preparation. In fact, Jessica and I <laughs> were preparing for the webinar and we were in here, you know, 15, 20 minutes early, like, you know, good presenters do. And I was like, oh, I'm a little yawny right now. So Jessica, what did I end up doing? You jumped on your bike. Stay I here. jumped on my exercise bike, which I have an exercise bike right there. And I did that. And I kind of just, you know, pedaled my little tush off, you know, for about three minutes just to get my blood flowing. So Jessica talked about the perfect content formula, storytelling, education, entertainment, call to action. Entertainment is so vitally important because it is a show. You have to, uh, you know, yes, <laughs> Jessica did some push ups too. Uh, she wanted to make sure her heart weight was up. Um, and so that's the kicker, right? We just want to make sure that you realize that it's showtime, and that means that it's jazz hands and all. You have to be ready to do that, but it's not just physically being prepared. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about some physical preparation in just a second. But you need to have your mind right, and that's why what Jessica had shared earlier with the outline is so vitally important. You also need to practice. Jessica and I blocked out 90 minutes yesterday and we went through slide by slide for this presentation so that we would put on a good show for you. It's important because if I can keep your attention for an hour, I kept your attention for an hour, right? That's what you wanna be able to do when it comes to any sort of long form content. I also wanna make sure that you know that whatever happened right before you hit record, you have to leave that in the past, which is why I refer to it as the emotional warm up. It does, you know, it it does matter because I know, you know, sometimes life sucks. Somebody cut you off. Maybe you got an offender bender. You got an argument with somebody. But when it's showtime, you have to be able to push and compartmentalize that stuff out because as soon as that you hit record and that camera's on, your audience doesn't want anything but a good show. The other thing that you need to do is make sure that you're warming up your voice. Uh, you know, Jessica, would, would you share share the, the story that you were you, that you and I were talking about yesterday? My cautionary tale. Yes. <laughs> a couple of years ago, I did not heed Matt's advice about warming up my vocal cords before speaking. And I was preparing to give a, I think it was a 45 minute presentation to our writing team. And I must've been nervous because I decided to practice the presentation right before so I, I I did the presentation back to back and just wore out my voice because I I actually didn't do anything to prepare it and I you know wasn't really used to speaking at length either and I ended up straining my vocal cords like it burned and it came on pretty quickly after that presentation and I was you know that was a Friday I was writing notes to my family the whole weekend so don't let that happen to you <laughs> What we recommend that you do is you do, you like I sing a lot of times or I will just do uh, uh, vocal stretches, which basically means I'll start very, very low and then I'll, I'll hum or sing until I can hit the upper part of my range. And I'll do that three or four times. It, it's just like, so Jessica did her pushups, right? And I got on my bike. Now I didn't stretch out before I got on my bike. But when you exercise, you generally want to stretch out. When you're going to use a muscle repeatedly, there are ex stretching exercises. Most of us know this about working out, but we don't think about that when it comes to, you know, especially, you know, preparing our vocal cords for a longer presentation. The other thing about performance that's widely important is not breathing from your chest. Most of you just take these really shallow breaths. When you're podcasting and when you're doing any sort of performance, whether that's you're doing a webinar, a seminar, a video, or a podcast, any long form content, you have to breathe with your belly, deep belly breaths, okay? And there's two reasons for this. Number one, it's just to get to oxygenate yourself so much better. But more importantly, you're not going to run out of air. Now, I don't really even think about doing this anymore, but I was on a, I was role playing something with somebody during our office hours in our Pod Rocket Academy. So what I did was I actually started breathing really shallow. And what happens is 
you run out of air. And when you run out of air, you get quiet. And that doesn't make you have as much confidence in me. We actually know that psychologically, that when somebody gets quiet at the end of the sentence, it really reduces the effectiveness of what was said before that because it comes across as you being less prepared and confident. Breathing. Breathing's the way to do it. And here's the other last tip of breathing. If you find yourself being a little short of breath and you need to take a deep breath with these microphones, the directional condenser microphone, the one that Jessica put the link in, all you have to do is turn your head and take a breath. So here's an example. You can hardly hear that. The difference would have been, which then you have to take that out in post-production. So just turning your head and away from the microphone to go ahead and take a breath is a really, really good way to do that. But once you practice and you get good at this, then what happens is, is your body will just intrinsically know, almost rote muscle memory, you need to take deep breaths from your belly so that you can support yourself and have consistent volume in your entire show. Can All right. Ask a question. Just a question. Yeah. How far should someone be from their microphone? That is a wonderful question. Unfortunately, it depends on the microphone, but the general rule is three fingers away from the mic. So if you see, I'm about three fingers away from the microphone and I'm consistently three fingers away from the microphone. Some microphones, you do need to be a little bit closer. Some microphones, it's two, all right? But at least three fingers is really the farthest away. Mm -hmm. And especially when you're using that microphone, that Samson microphone, um, because it, well, isn't that what you have? Yeah. 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 And so, so the neat thing about, and if you actually look at how Jessica's microphone is set up too, she has her microphone pointing in a direction where it's still going to pick up the vocal pattern that goes in front of that. It's basically a cone that comes over the microphone like this. All right. And so when you have that cone, you, as long as you're talking through that plane, you are going to be able to be heard very, very, very clearly. Um, it's really important to make sure that you understand your equipment. It's important. This is why we said that you need to do a dry run. Like I had said on this last slide here, you do a dry run in practice. We recommend that the day of your recording, you actually hit record and talk for three or four minutes, stop it and go and listen to it just to make sure that there isn't any weird ambient noise that you're not breathing too heavily. You can check your P's and S's at that point. And also just make sure your equipment's working. Jessica, I shot a video for a client a little while ago. This is such a dorky thing for me to do because yeah, I do this a lot. But I had actually, so I have a mixer and I I hit the 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 mute button on my mixer because of something I don't remember what was going on because I, I don't normally do that and it was still off. And I went to shoot a loom video and I got done with a three minute loom video and I was like nailed it. And I went back to try to listen to it. And I looked over, red lights on. Oh, that's so sad. Oh, that's so sad. Uh, okay. So uh, I had to shoot the whole darn thing over again. All right. Speaking of red light, it's time to record your episode, everybody. We're going to go ahead and get ready to hit record and do the best job we possibly can. Some of this is going to sound redundant. I'm doing that for a reason. Number one, because you all are probably... 30 to 70% paying attention. And I need to make sure that you remember, you remember to do these things. So the first thing is you always want to test your equipment. Always, always test your equipment. No matter what system you're using, Squadcast, Riverside, Zoom, old school Skype, you can always do a test recording and check it. Please make sure that you do that. Uh, if you don't have a professional producer in the room with you, please make sure that you do that. The next thing is you have to find your flow. There, there are four different things that you need to pay attention to in your presentation. The, the first one is the your pace. Second is your pentameter. Third is your volume. And fourth is your inflection. So pacing is just because you all get excited. Jessica and I talk about this a lot. We've talked about it in other episodes or other episodes and other webinars. When you get excited, you're going to talk much faster, right? We know that. And so, but being conscious of that, that you're nervous and excited, you do need to try to slow yourself down. Your pentameter is that 
cadence, that bump, ba bump, ba bump, ba bump. The way that you speak, you, all of us have a rhythmic pattern to how we speak. If you have heard some of the greatest speakers of our times, or even in, in history, they all had this very distinct, recognizable pentameter. And that pentameter is a great way for you to control the first issue, which is pace, because it's difficult to have your natural speaking flow sped up. All right. The next one is going to be volume. Um, if you've ever heard a professional singer, and Jessica, we didn't talk about this in, in practice, but I was just watching a, a video with Ariana Grande, who I think is like one of the greatest vocal people of our time, she, you know, but one of the things that she does is when she's singing, she will pull the microphone away when she's like belting, right? Because if not, she's going to blow the microphone out. This is no different. Now, I don't know if you guys are going to be belting on your show, but please, please, please remember that if you are going to get louder, then you do need to move away from the microphone, move in to try to, you know, drive a point home and then move back or increase your volume or not. And then the last part is inflection. And, and Jessica, this is another thing. I don't know if I've actually ever shared this. I don't think I've ever shared this with the audience, but when I first started doing voice work professionally in financial services, I was at Carson, which used to be called Peak. It was, now it's called Carson Consulting. And we used to send client CDs, how long ago this was, uh, of the, 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 the test into the trenches steps that we used to walk them through. And, and, and Steve Sandusky and Ron Carson wanted me to re-record the first section that I had redone, rebuilt for the system, which was called blueprinting. And I got done with it and I was very proud of myself because I got it done. We had this little recording studio and um, Laura, who was my boss, Laura Pearson, she came up to me and she goes, what the hell was that? And I was like, what, what, are you, what are you talking about? She's like, you sounded like you were like a morning talk show radio guy. And I was like, Oh yeah. Because I was like, you really inflecting everything and trying. And, and she's like, no, dude, you can't, you got to do that over again. It was the hours in the recording studio. And I just wasted mm -hmm. it because I wasn't speaking normally. So please, please make sure that you're speaking clearly. You're relaxed. You're speaking in your normal pace and you're also speaking in your normal inflection. The last thing is, and this is one of the reasons why we gave you that free uh, resource. Please try to stay on track. Minor side quests aren't bad but please make sure you stay on track as much as you can. All right. So that is how you get ready to record. And then after all of those things are in place, then you actually hit the record button. Make sure you hit the record button. Kirk and I have made this mistake. We were about 15 minutes into a top advisor marketing podcast. And I said, did you hit the record button? He goes, that's your job, dude. And I was like, ah, crap. And of course, if you don't hit the record button, it doesn't record anything. And so we needed to go ahead and re-record the episodes. So please make sure you hit the record button. And with that, Jessica, the episode is recorded. Now what? Can I ask oh, you? Crap. <laughs> I want to ask you a question I've never asked you before. Oh. What is your take on laughing? during mm. a recording yes no um well we've had issues with that because i laugh a lot <laughs> um if you are going to laugh you do need to make sure that you do move away from the microphone a little bit because if not you're going to blow everybody's ears out in in this this is and we're in editing right now so i'm just going to thank you you just totally teed me up for this well done sister i appreciate that when you have big spikes in in uh, the the volume, you're going to see that in post production, right? I really recommend all of you just download Audacity. Listen, it's free. It's unbelievably clear. It's so easy to use. It, the learning curve isn't a lot. GarageBand is okay if you have a Mac. If you really need to up your game and if you're trying to audio and video and sync everything up, Adobe Audition really is the best product that we found that you can use. But you'll see once you upload the MP3 or the WAV file into your, your audio editing software, you're going to see those big spikes. And you can manage some of that in post-production by highlighting the whole thing and clicking the normalize or the leveling button, which basically what that'll do is that will take your audio and your guests' audio and try to get that as close together as possible. Because the last thing that you want, and this drives me crazy, my wife loves this podcast. Um, it's a Brett Goldstein's podcast. It's called Films to be Buried With, which by the way, is absolutely fantastic. Uh, except for there's major production issues that drive me crazy. Like he'll be up here and his guest's volume will be down here. 
And so you have to turn it up to hear the guest and then Brett comes on and it blows you out because, you know, he's, that can be managed very, very quickly with just some simple leveling. Try to take out any of the major issues. When we first started doing podcast editing for financial advisors, I'm the one who actually did all the post-production and uh, I took out too much. So it sounded robotic and not real. There weren't any breaths or sneezes or not really sneezes and coughs, but umzo, soja, nose, filler words. I took out as much silence as I possibly could. Don't strive for perfection. Just have it be good. Have it make sure it sounds like you. But if you go, get into a coughing fit, please edit that out because nobody needs, you know, a 30 second coughing fit, even if that's something that you normally do. And please, please make sure that you're uh, adding your intro and your outro. You're doing a, what's called a noise profile to remove any ambient background noise. Just make sure that it sounds good because video podcasting is a little bit different. You can see Jessica and I right now, right? You can see us. So we are somewhat of a distraction, but when you're driving down the road and you only have the audio or when you're exercising, cooking, dinner, getting ready in the morning, you don't have that distraction from the presenter. And so you do need to make sure that your audio is clean as possible. All right. I can't believe we're already here. I know. This is crazy. I know. <laughs> You're ready to publish your episode. Okay. You'll want to have your podcast published on as many channels as possible, like Apple Podcast, Spotify, and so on. And the way to do that is to sign up with a syndication or a hosting platform like Blueberry. I'm mentioning Blueberry because we've been using Blueberry for several years now. Um, I don't know, Matt, how many episodes? Like, we put thousands of episodes. Oh, yeah. Blueberry. Like great interface, great analytics. And the interface is so important. Do you want something that's user friendly because you want to be able to feel motivated to log into it? So Either way, choose your hosting platform, and that's how you're going to distribute your podcast. Now, as far as I've seen, you cannot syndicate directly to YouTube. That's an extra step, but it is worthwhile. <laughs> you know, for the episodes that we've mentioned, that YouTube is such a major podcast player. And I just I actually need to read this. I saw a stat earlier from Veritonic. 65% of people who watch a podcast on YouTube are consuming it for the first time. So it's a great place to be promoting episode one and pulling in that new audience. Matt, can you speak about the compliance? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that. Uh, Cause this is very, very important. Uh, depending on who you're with, even if you're your own RIA, whoever your compliance overseers are, broker dealers are in a little different category. You have to check with them to see where you can post your show because like everybody wants to be on Apple podcasts, but Apple podcasts doesn't allow you to turn anything off. So you could have client complaints or testimonials there. And maybe that's not something that you can really manage. And Apple's going to make it very difficult for you to take that stuff down. I am not saying that that happens very often. In fact, it happens once in a cabillion, but you know, that's how compliance works. This is why Spotify is the preferred channel. In fact, we're approved at uh, a couple of different places right now. Raymond James is the newest one. Um, they're only allowed to publish directly to Spotify. And so because we, we control all of this and you can too, by the way, turn everything off on the back end. So just please make sure that you're looking and talking to your compliance department. Yay, thank you. Okay, let's get into, you know, you've published your podcast. Now you're going to make a big splash about it. And Matt, you can go on to the example and I'll, I'll hit those points. So here is an example of a post from one of our clients, Tim Volk, um, his, his podcast, the Rainbow Bull podcast. So this post is all about generating awareness. My new podcast is here. I'm a member of the LGBTQ community because that's the audience the podcast is for. Here's what we're going to talk about on the podcast. Um, and then you can see in the graphic, there is a the podcast cover art. And if we could hit play on this video, we'd actually see confetti falling down on it. So that little movement is great online because it catches the human eye. And you can actually do that in Canva. Canva has these dynamic stickers that you can just pop onto an image and then download it as a GIF, upload it as an image on social media. It looks impressive, but it's actually, it's actually pretty easy. And something else to note here is, is that um, 
oh gosh, what was I going to say? When you're writing a post, you want to be thinking about your audience from your audience's perspective. What is going to entice them to listen to your episode? Okay, let's see the next example. So that one was, this was all about, you know, awareness of the general podcast. And now this one shines a spotlight specifically on episode one. You know, the message is still, hey, big news. Like, you know, the podcast is now here and episode one is available. And what Tim has done here is he actually pulled a section of his origin story, put it into an audio clip. You can do video as well to create what SparkToro calls zero click content where people can get value without leaving the social media platform. But they could also go click on the podcast too, but that's that's additive. And Matt and I actually did a, I think a great webinar <laughs> about this a few months ago called the Atomic Content Webinar, where we talk about how to slice and dice your podcast into all kinds of content. Because, oh my gosh, if you haven't told your story yet to your audience, or even if it's been a while, or you haven't you know, told it in a certain way, this is a great, great opportunity to do that. And we actually guide you, we take you through a, a walkthrough in that, um, in that, uh, sorry, that webinar. And we actually use episode one as an example. So we'll put the link in the chat in a moment. So that is our social media promotion, you know, taking all these opportunities to make a splash about your new podcast. And then next up, we're going to talk about email promotion. And Matt, you can actually go to the next slide and we'll actually just look at an example here. Okay, this is um, an example from a different client who's launching their podcast of an email. And this email, this is actually just a screenshot from a Google Doc. This isn't from inside of a CRM, but just for the sake of showing an example here, what you want to do is start with a really like intriguing uh, sort of subject line. So it could be something like introducing and then the name of your podcast or the name of your podcast is here or is now live. And then inside the email, you want to make it really obvious and easy to know where to click. So you can see at the top of the episode, introducing, and then that's a link right there. And then they give some context of what the podcast is about. And then there are more opportunities to click. You could also embed the image with a link. And I would highly, highly recommend doing that. A lot of people click on images in my experience. And if your podcast is on YouTube, put a big play button on mm. that image because that's such a great cue that ooh, mm. we've got something to watch and it's just like fun, fun to press the button. Okay, so this is, you know, an, an email announcing your podcast and you could do a follow up email that's like, hey, you know, have you tuned into my new pod or, you know, into our new podcast yet? Um, I'd love to hear what you think. And what a great example to keep talking about your podcast but to now get your community also involved and excited about it. I think, yeah, those are the main points for email. All right. So as we wrap up the show today, I just want to give you guys all an absolutely fantastic opportunity. In fact, and something that has a pretty nice discount to it too. So this is Jane. We referred to her early in the show. And one of the things that Jessica said about Jane and Manasa, her, her co-host is they did everything on their own. So they used this. This is our Pod Rocket Influence Academy. Listen, everybody, there's 30 plus courses in there. You get eight hours of office hours with Jessica, myself, and Kirk every single solitary month where you can come on and ask us any questions that you want. And here's the deal. Take this, take a picture of this with your phone and please use the coupon code LAUNCH7 and you're going to get 10% off of this $249 a month process. Listen, process product. This is something that Kirk and I, and actually Jessica and our whole team have worked on for a really long time. We have worked very, very, very hard to, uh, to get so much stuff that you guys can just implement immediately. And you as the financial advisor don't have to do this. You can send your team through the Pod Rocket Influence Academy and they're going to learn a whole bunch. And I'm just going to give you some examples of what you see in there. So we've got all sorts of courses. We And it's not just podcasting. This is everything to do with your content marketing. So marketing plans, uh, you know, and again, we, we obviously have some podcasting stuff there. But this one here is one of my absolute favorites. We have this amazing branding course that will help you and your team solidify everything that you need to do to be 
consistent in your brand communication. And then we have our dashboard, which is just one of the neatest things that Kirk and our dev team have worked on really for a long time here. You can take our influence readiness test, which is a very comprehensive way to find out where the gaps are within your uh, within your practice. These are all of the different ways that you get your scores and, and how you can solve the problem because we give you this, and I just think this is the coolest thing in the world. Um, here's your influence readiness score. We've gamified everything. You can't move to the next level until you get over 50%. Um, and the other big thing about this is, is you have this here, which is all of the things list by or listed of all of the things that we've identified as the gaps within your business to make it so that you can solve those, increase your score, right? And then also go ahead and get the appropriate badges. You get all of this, 34 courses, 18 hour, or eight hours of office hours, you get new, we're doing new courses all the time. And this is something that you and or your team can be involved in at less than $249 a month. So with that, we're going to open it up to any sort of questions. Uh, we just had a question a little uh, before. Uh, Jessica, I don't know if you saw that. Um, it was from Tyler. Um, so I ended up uh, putting the link in. Tyler was asking, can we get a link to the headphones that Matt mentioned? My co-host would like to do a video, would do video and don't want to have the big, you know, Princess Leia ear ear thing. So I did put that into the, the chat. They were a Shure, S-H-U-R-E um, headphone that's an in-ear uh, headphone that wraps around the back of your ear. Uh, and it's a very, very low profile. And then like I have a beard, so I don't have to do it. I can actually put it underneath my chin. But a lot of times you'll just have it go all the way back and it'll run down the back of, of your, your head. So anyway, that's a really, really good system. Yeah, are they a little bit more expensive? Yeah, they're like a hundred bucks, uh, but I absolutely love them. Uh, they're, they're how I keep this unbelievably neat, clean, uh, profile when I'm doing, uh, all of our videos and our, and our podcasts. Um, so if, uh, so if you have any questions, go ahead and put that in there, but I'm just going to go ahead and put this last screen up one more time, because listen, our, our entire goal here at Proudmouth is to help you rise above the noise and be your own loud. Okay. What that means is you have to unapologetically be yourself and create organic content because marketing is fundamentally changed. You can't do what you did in the 1900s. It just flat out doesn't work as well anymore. And if you want to pay attention to the great wealth transfer, which is anywhere from 72 to 75 trillion dollars. And if you want to retain any of those assets, you have to have a content marketing strategy. We know this. In fact, um, FMG just did a webinar on it. And our friends at Idea Decanter just did a webinar on it. And Snappy Kraken has a webinar on it. I mean, all of us marketers are all saying the same thing, that if you don't have a content marketing strategy, you are not going to retain these assets. And I don't know about you, but 72 to $75 trillion, that's a lot of money, uh, you know, for the next 15 years. And our Pod Rocket Influence Academy can absolutely help you get all of your pieces in place so that you can successfully market to not just the generation you're working with now, but generations to come. All right. Well, Jessica, it doesn't seem like we have any questions. We can give people eight minutes back into their life, which is always a good gift to have that gift of time. Jessica, I want to thank you. I love doing these with you. You are such a pro. Thank you, thank you for your brain. Um, and uh, listen, anybody, if you guys have any questions, please make sure that you reach out. We are more than welcome to help you, you know, follow both Jessica and I on social media, LinkedIn specifically, and we will be more than happy to answer any of your questions. So thank you for everybody who's been here and we will talk soon. Bye everybody.